today I wanted to talk about outliners and discovery writers, also known as architects and gardeners, planners and pantsers. There's a lot of names for them, but they they they, they mean roughly like the same things. Number one victory royale, yeah, Fortnite we bout to get down. get down. Ten kills on the board right now, just wiped out tomato town. So first off, what are outliners and and discovery writers. Well, we'll start with the outliners. Outliners are writers who plan every bit of their story. They know what the ending is right from the get-go. They know what the beginning is right from the get-go. They know all the scenes in between that. They have all of that already written out and listed out. They just need to now write the story itself. Meanwhile, discovery writers are writers who have no clue what the story is gonna be. They have no clue what's going on. They have a couple of characters, they're putting them in a situation, and who knows what's gonna come after that. We'll, we'll see what, what flies. And you have a whole range of writers that are on different sides and different parts of this spectrum, because in reality, most people are gonna fall somewhere in the middle of all of this. Some people like outlining a story. They like being able to write a story knowing that there's a structure, knowing that there's something that they can build to. But for some people, making an outline ruins the fun and the excitement of writing. Some good examples of writers who are who are on the spectrum, right? You have Writers like Stephen King, George R.R. R. Martin, Rebecca Kwong, who are all discovery writers. On the other side, you have you have Brandon Sanderson. You also have Orsulyn Scott Card. You also have Evan Winter, who is also a outliner. And all of these authors, great authors, got a lot of great books. So ultimately, when it comes down to figuring out which which type of writing is is the right one is ultimately just figuring out which one works best for you and so i wanted to make this video to talk about some of the some of the challenges you may see with these different approaches to writing and some of the benefits and some extra ideas that i don't see a lot of other people talk about when they talk about this this idea this subject first off let's talk about outliners let's talk about what they do really really well they often have really good plots with really good pacing and often they can feel like like every every page and every every sentence has a purpose behind it of course there are outliers to that and after the revision process it doesn't really matter too much which which type of author you are but that that is kind of a thing a benefit to being an outliner is you don't have to do quite as much in the revision process. When, Whenever I listen to outliners uh, speak about why they're outliners, one of the things that they always bring up is how they hate revision and how they would rather do as little of it as possible. <laughs> so it's pretty cool, but what are some weaknesses about outliners? Often the characters can feel kind of stilted because if they're going on this pre-organized, predestined adventure or story or what have you, then it's it gets harder to make characters that, that feel like they have their own agency. Maybe your character really wants to do this one thing, but the plot needs them to do another thing. And so you get this kind of push to to force them that direction, which is something that hopefully will be ironed out in the revision process if that if that problem starts to come up but that is that is something that can happen in in your story which is why ideally you would hope to be able to outline the story in such a way to where you are making a character who is right to make the decisions they make and go where the plot leads them because then it feels like they're leading the plot now Let's talk about discovery writers. Let's talk about what they do well. Discovery writers are really good at making characters that feel really well realized because, because what they're doing is they're exploring a character in their writing and they're seeing like, how would this character 
react to such a such a crazy situation that is often the approach to to what's going on there what are some of the weaknesses about being a discovery writer well for one thing discovery writers can often meander a little more in their plots they can often start to start to lose focus in in what's going on and it can be a little harder to foreshadow things because either you're going to be planting a lot of seeds that will be completely dropped because you, you forgot about them or you'll plant a seed not know what it is build it up and then have it fall completely flat because you didn't know what it was in the first place or in other words to, to summarize both of those things, the plots can have really interesting buildup, but then just completely fall flat in the end. So despite your fully realized characters, the ending might not be as satisfactory as one would hope. And again, a lot of this would just come down to the revision process and like how you go about that. I don't want to address these weaknesses as reasons why you should or shouldn't be either of these types of writers. It's just important to be aware of so that when you write and you are going into the revision process, you know what to look for or you have an idea of what, where to, where to start. But again, often most people are in kind of a gray area of this spectrum. Earlier I mentioned how Brandon Sanderson outlines his plots but he discovery writes his characters. That's something that works for him. That's not something that works for everyone. For me personally, how I generally do things is I get ideas of like scenes. Cause I guess my brain's wired to think of stories like, like movies and shows, which I wanna make a lot of. So I guess that works. But I think of these very specific key moments in stories and I'll write those down and I'll like tell myself, okay, I'm building to this. And then I may have varying degrees of outline in between those moments. But then once it comes to actually writing the story, it's all out the window. <laughs> all that hard work just gone. Okay, not really. But I, I try to allow my characters to have agency. I try to allow my characters to never do anything that, that I don't feel like they would do. And of course, I'm not going to be perfect at that. Of course, I'm going to make a lot of mistakes in that. But I think ultimately, the more that I can have my characters take the main lead of the plot, then it will ultimately turn out to be way better than than what I initially thought. But also because of that, I try to I try to predict these key moments and I try to fit them into the most realistic the most probable way a character would get to that situation. So of course they could still just completely derail things, but there's a certain probability that they won't. And I want that probability as high as possible. So with that, I want to add a little bit of like a two cents or like a, or like something that I haven't personally seen a lot of on, on the internet where I've where I dwell as far as, you know, people talking about writing. Something I personally do in some of my writing is I'll get out of my comfort zone. I will try to gauge which of these two styles works for which story best. For example, if I'm writing a character study, if I'm, if I'm making a story where I want one of the main appeals to be the main character that we follow. It might benefit me to do a lot more discovery writing for that show or that movie or that book than, than plotting it out would be because then I'm letting the character live and breathe and be who they are, which you want out of a character study. How I would go about this is I would make a character. I would 
make situations that challenge different parts of that character, of their beliefs, of their values, and then I would allow them to find their own ways out of those situations. Or maybe they don't always find their way out of those situations and and maybe that, that helps them grow in a certain way. On the other hand, for mystery stories, I generally try to outline pretty heavily. I try to make sure that I understand everything about the mystery before I even get started because that's something I want to, to understand better. That way, when I actually start writing this story about how someone solves this mystery or how they how they come to the truth of, of what's going on in the story, I know when to foreshadow. I know when to do this here and that there, which lends itself really well to mystery where everything is so where everything is so fine-tuned. That's not to say that you can't make a mystery that isn't discovery written and you can't make a story that is a character study that is that is plotted out. My immediate thought is Quentin Tarantino is a discovery writer who wrote The Hateful Eight, which is a murder mystery, sort of. It's a good movie, that's for sure. I just think that there is good that can come out of getting out of your comfort zone and trying something new out and seeing if you can take any anything away from that that would benefit you even further. Also, going into a direction that you don't usually go to writing or a different approach, it can really help you get started. Sometimes I can't plot a story. So if I have this story idea, and I want to get started, the best thing for me to do is to just get started and to just start discovery writing. And then, you know, I can make a plot later and I can I can start rewriting later, but I need something to at least get me to begin the process. Maybe, maybe I have a story idea that seems a little too intimidating to just discovery write. So maybe it would do, do me good to start outlining it gosh dang it <laughs> we're gonna make this work for the, this video <laughs> okay we're gonna turn turn this light down oh okay that works that works so i think i'm getting a little more rambly than than informative now so i think that's enough from me i hope this video is able to help you out i hope this video is able to give you some unique ideas, maybe some things to try. I plan to make more writing content in the future, so be sure to like this video and to subscribe if you want to see more. I already have quite a few writing videos on my channel, so if you really liked this one, you can go back and check those out. But good luck on your writing escapades, or maybe good luck with, the, with using the knowledge that you have gained from this video in whatever way you want to. I'm not your mom, but I can be your daddy. So, uh, I feel, I feel uncomfortable. I'm, I'm just going to stop recording now.